Hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> Today in Dan versus the Kitchen, I am making fajita patties, which is from the Clean and Simple Reset. This is the last one of May for the Clean and Simple mm -hmm. Reset. Next week we have something that might be a little bit more exciting. I'm excited this about is exciting. It. What's not exciting about this? This is exciting. <laughs> so I'm making fajita patties and I'm also going to make the guacamole, which is on our website. So if you want to um, find that recipe, just go to havebutterwilltravel.com, type in guacamole and you will find it. Um, I'm winging that because I don't have the actual recipe, but a lot of the work, has already been done for me. Um, so the first instructions are heat a large nonstick frying pan or skillet over medium heat and add one tablespoon of your chosen oil. So hog on. You might notice we are, again, not in our kitchen. We are in Port Macquarie again. That has come round very quick again. Yeah. Was that a month ago? Yeah, it was a month we? ago that I made the chicken tenders. Yeah, that's what I want. Tablespoon of oil. Don't have to measure it. I don't have to measure it, apparently. <laughs> Find that risky already. <laughs> So we'll just heat that up and what we're going to put in that pan is the onion, capsicum, jalapeno and salt and saute for 8 to 10 minutes. So Erica has chopped all of that up for me. What we have here, one red capsicum or bell pepper, a jalapeno, turn that around so you can see it, and an onion. And that's all going to go in and we're kind of just going to soften and saute that down before we put it into the um chicken mince which makes the their chicken um kind of burger patties but they're delicious i'm looking forward to it okay hi shelly glad you made it and found us um hi annette hi bronwyn hi trish hi justin amelia first time watching live welcome hi jules Oh, Trish, you're at Kendall. Is that near Port Macquarie? No idea. Must be. Um, <laughs> Spoz girl's watching but muted at the hairdressers. Well, that's going to be. That's Kim. Oh, Kim. <laughs> that will be very boring. Um, Kylie said you should drop in, drop in to Urunga and say hi. I love your videos. Is that That's a fair way north from here, isn't it? I don't know. We don't, we don't know, know the area, area very, very well. well. Okay. <laughs> Um, hi there, Dan and Erica. Finally counting a live from New York. Hey, New York. Nice What's to have you. New York? <laughs> hey, Wendy. You crazy people in the US. Hi from far north Queensland. Can't wait for your pork rind review. Yeah, so that'll be out in a couple of weeks, I think. The pork oh, did you say review. we were doing that? Yeah, because on the video of the snitchel crumb, a few people asked about Good what pork, pork rinds in Australia, and I said we've got a video coming. We've got out. all the pork rinds sitting at home. We just got to film the video. <laughs> I've got what my has turned into my favourite actually the passion fruit Mount Franklin, no sugar. It's nice. We tried the um, was it lemon yeah, the the Aldi one? Aldi. We weren't massive fans of the yeah, flavour. It tasted a bit like. Dirt. A bit earthy. Did anyone else find that Aldi lemon one was a little bit earthy? I liked the nectarine one and the pineapple one, but not sure about the lemon one. Hey, Linda. How are you going? Hi, Rena. Nice to see you here as well. It's going to take a while. Probably, <laughs> probably should have put the pan on before we started. Um, if you've got any questions or anything you want to ask us, we went to Melbourne on the weekend and we just found out there's been some new COVID cases there. They've just announced it this afternoon. So hopefully we are all fine. We didn't go to the area that they've named. I think Northern they've said suburbs. Whittlesea, local government area. We didn't go quite that far out. So hopefully we're okay. Um Hi, Wendy. 
Hi from far north Queensland. Can't wait for your pork rind review. I reckon already said that. <laughs> um, Kylie said it's about an hour from Port Macquarie, 25 minutes before Coffs. You're right. Yeah, I thought it was closer to Coffs Hammer. Oh, uh, it's near. Oh, uh, so Kendall's near Loriton, which is not far from here, um, close to Comboyne. Where your favourite blueberries come from? Ah, yes, they are. They from there. are. They are our Good memory. We're gonna wait for next summer to have them again. Now they are good. Just bumping this up to get it moving. You can probably put it in. Get really mad. <laughs> I'm trying to follow the instructions. <laughs> There's no sizzle at all. Oh, there is. A You're kind of not browning it. You just like. Softening it. Should we tell them what the idea is for next week? Yeah, go for it then. It's your idea. It's your cooking show. It's not my cooking show. <laughs> all right, I've just put all of those. So it was capsicum, onion, and one jalapeno into the pan. We'll just let this cook up a little bit. And while that's happening, we will. Um, get stuck into the guacamole. So Erica cut a shallot, echelot, French shallot. There's a bunch of different names for this. It's literally the small little brown, it looks like a small brown onion. It's about that big. Um, and it's got some lime juice mm -hmm. and some salt and pepper or just yeah. salt. So I just like to put it in lime juice um, and set it there for a like five to ten minutes or something it just takes the um real sharpness, sharpness. out of the shallot and the shallots are a bit sweeter than an onion so they're yes. quite nice in yes. this guacamole and it takes three ripe oh look at oh, that guys. look at that look at that avocado so nice to have the Hass avocados back in the supermarkets and these are a dollar fifty feel like we've been paying Way, way, more, way than more than that for avocados lately. So. so from what I can tell, I just put this in. See, that's pretty soft. And mush it up. So I'll put all of the avocados in. Oh, so Defence Wiz, who's, from, who's in New York, planning a trip next year back to Sydney and Melbourne to compete on your country's beach volleyball tour. Oh, Hopefully wow. it works Didn't out. Didn't even with know we had a beach volleyball Who tour. Who knew we had a beach volleyball tour? Well, I mean, it's not surprising. We should ah, have That one. sounds very Australian. Good luck. Good luck. Hey, Eleni, how are you? Annette made the fajita patties last week. Yeah, they're yummy. We haven't had them this time on the reset. We haven't had so. them since we made them, I think. <laughs> yes, we have. Wow. Yes, we have. Hey, Karen, how are you going? Can I just cut this? <laughs> oh, two out of two. Perfect. Mark said, I knew there had uh, had been a discussion about pork cracker crumbs. I'll await the next installment. Oh, yes, Mark. <laughs> Mark was asking in the reset about oh, them. Oh, Okay. Yeah, that's one of the things. Um, like it can be a bit. You can't buy them at the supermarket. Yeah, and they tend to like it. It just makes it doesn't. Say, I mean, I, I I don't know. I don't produce pork rinds, but it doesn't seem to make sense that you have to cook them in like sunflower oil or soybean oil or canola oil or whatever. Like, why can't you cook them in pork <laughs> fat? Because that's what they kind of come from, right? <laughs> But it seems that the ones you buy in the supermarket generally oh, are cooked in junky three oils. Three out of three. three. That was me. I picked all those avocados. They were just from Woolies. Yeah, they were. Oh, Jane. Jane is Rainbird Valley. Can you do a homemade salsa recipe? Oh, that would be nice. Like a pico de gallo kind of one or like a cooked one. I like a fresh one. Fresh is nicer. Yeah. Hey, Heidi. Nice to see you too. 
Perfect Hass avocados right there. Very exciting after the shepherd after surviving the shepherd season. Which wasn't that long. <laughs> Talk about fair. the ultimate first world problems. The <laughs> avocado, um, what is it? Variety. <laughs> so for anyone that's just jumped on, I've got the capsicum, come up and... jalapeno, and the onions just sautéing away here, getting those soft. And I'm making some guacamole. So I'm just going to mush up. Show us, show us what you got there. A whole bunch of avocado in a bowl. <laughs> Feel like this is going to be bad. <laughs> well, we had to work with the bowls that we had within the apartment that we're staying in. Actually, it was I was surprised they had those three those stainless steel bowls. Actually, I thought you'd have to use like a cereal bowl. <laughs> it was messy already. You'll be right. You'll be right. I met did a pork schnitzel last night with the sesame seeds. Awesome. Yeah, there was a few comments on the YouTube um, video about the sesame being interesting. People hadn't heard of that as an option as a crumb before. That recipe has been on our site for just so easy. That's what I like about it. You don't have to mess around with an egg wash or anything. You just bang it on, <laughs> bang it on. And it's not too thick, it's just a nice thin coating. But, yeah, we're talking about our latest video on YouTube, which was um, a schnitzel crumb off, so we, or low-carb schnitzel crumb off, should I say. So we did, I think, eight different eight. chicken crumbs and compared them to find the best one. So if you're wondering the best option, Go and watch the, video. the tastiest, Go and watch the video. Give it a thumbs up. But we've come up with a bunch of different ideas to fill yeah. the similar style recipes for a few other other um, not recipes um videos. Similar concept where we do a bunch of different things. Yeah. So thanks to everyone who did some suggestions in the comments of that video. Does that go in here or in the? No, that's for the patties. Um, you just might need to taste it for salt. Yeah, I will. So. In the, um, yeah, some of the suggestions were kind of trying different, like mug, mug cake. I always find that difficult to say, mug cake recipes to see what's the best one. Um, comparing pizza bases, which I thought was a cool one because you could do like chicken crust, cauliflower, cauliflower fat, fat head. head. Um, and there's a couple of board options as well. Yeah, so, so that could be cool. Um, what else was there? Granolas. So watch this space. We might have some more videos along those lines coming out soon because it was such a fun one to do as well, wasn't it, Dan? It was a lot Getting more involved fun. in the filming than what we yes, <laughs> do for some of our other videos, but it was kind of fun to film. Yes, so, from when you would think they would just cook them in pork fat. Like it seems obvious to me, but there's, it's obviously cheaper not to do that. Okay, guys, I need your opinion. What do we think of that texture? Oh, that's I that like looks that right texture. for me. I like it like oh, a little like smooth, chunky. Smooth. We just mush it with a fork. So it's just the shallots, eschalots, French shallots, whatever you call them, lime juice, avocado, and salt. Might put a bit of salt Usually you need a bit of salt with avocados, I think. Ah, Brahman got four for five dollars at Coles. Four avocados for five dollars. Bargain. Wow, that was better than Oh, that. thank you so much, Heidi, for the super sticker. Really appreciate it. Um, most of the pork rinds here in the US are done in pork fat, yeah. even in our dollar you're, stores. You're lucky to have yeah, good. Because um... on that video, someone from the US commented, Oh, you can. Um, someone asked about where to get pork crumbs. I like, just get the Pango pork crumbs on Amazon. Oh, like, yeah, right. No, we don't have that. You have to make your own. We're, we're back in the dark ages here. <laughs> we don't have Pango pork crumbs. They do have a pork crumb option. That they sell at Low Carb Emporium, but unfortunately, it's 
the ingredients aren't great. So I would just crush my own. But yes, pork rinds in the US is um, great. All right, I reckon Erica might disagree, but do we want to go further than this? Yes. Okay, not ready yet. <laughs> Uh, are you allowed to seek outside of mine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sylvia said we'll be having chicken drumsticks a hundred ways this week. Got three kilos for a dollar ninety nine a kilo. Bargain. Yes, well, you know, chicken drumsticks in the air fryer. Curry chicken drumsticks. <laughs> it's, so it's so versatile. It's so versatile. Cat, like a chicken cacciatore sort of thing like oh yeah tanya said hi erica and dan i'm starting my keto journey from tomorrow wow watching Welcome. your videos for guidance Welcome. clearing out your pantry that is an awesome first step because that is going to set you up for success i feel like if you've got you know everything you need and well not everything you need but you don't have things that you don't need i guess it just will make it easier going to the cupboard not seeing things that you possibly don't want to be having particularly at the start when it can be a bit more challenging so if you've got someone else in your house yeah. that has things just put them in quarantine put them in a tub or put <laughs> them somewhere that they're not at eye level at well, all they're not times. in the pantry like yeah. if they're in a separate cupboard like above the fridge or something the cupboard that you don't go to that's what we would suggest but yes yeah, so if you have any questions tanya everyone who's watching or a lot of people who are watching this are very experienced with low carb so there'd be heaps of advice here so if you have any questions, I'm sure everyone would love to help you. I would recommend if you're on Facebook, go and join the Aussie Low Carb community. That's our group and the majority of people here tonight are in that group. It's a great place to ask questions and um, we're in there. So if you have a question for us, we will likely answer it in there. Catherine said, just joined. Are you guys on holiday? We are in Port Macquarie. We come here once a month for Dan to do to work up here for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it kind of feels like we're on holiday, which, which is nice. Like <laughs> but it's not officially. It's not officially a holiday. I'm disputing the instructions. <laughs> um, a few people are loving the sesame crumbs. Yeah, definitely give it a try. Even if you think it's weird, that it doesn't taste super strong, no. but it's a nice flavour, I think. I like it better than if you just did plain almond flour, in my opinion. Yeah. Mug said, I love the sesame crumb but use an egg wash and I still feel the crumb sticks better that way. We I used guess... an egg wash for that video to keep it yeah, consistent. Yeah, I actually found it got too much though. I think that's why it tasted really sesame, I thought, afterwards because it was too much. But it's just years of doing that way with breadcrumbs. Yeah, I get it. I get it, Mark. And it's not a, um, a thick coating with the sesame. No. As yeah. Like the pork rind and the parmesan and all that, that got like quite a – more of a schnitzel type coating, whereas the sesame one is thinner without the egg wash. Yes, true. Perfect guac, Dan. It's pretty yummy. <laughs> Does it taste okay? <laughs> Am I getting there with this? <laughs> uh, all the stress of MasterChef. No, this is like way more relaxed than MasterChef and it's still stressful. And then he said, what's in that stubby on the bench, Dan? This? <laughs> oh, it's a sparkling mineral water, Eleni. Going hardcore. <laughs> Passion fruit, sparkling mineral water. <sighs> okay, Tanya. Due to my health deteriorating, I have to start keto. I saw your videos and inspired me to start I have given all non-keto foods to charity. What's the name of your Facebook group again? It's called Aussie Low Carb Community. Maybe and we, even if you're not Aussie, you're welcome there. We, we have we accept, Aussies in there. Um, <laughs> all people, so. <laughs> 
But we mainly do. I mean, it's great if you are Aussie because people are talking about Aussie products and that type of thing. It's not strictly keto, but there's a lot of keto people in there. And if you, you know, you can just say on your post. One just say, yeah, and yeah. also just say that you're new and people will be nice. Maybe. Oh, she's in London. All oh, right. You can still join. We'd love to have you. There's other people from the UK in there. Jackie's in there. <laughs> if you're interested in um, podcasts, I would recommend Keto Woman. Um, mm -hmm. That's a friend of ours. Her name's Daisy Brackenhall, and um, she is in the UK now. She was based in France, but now she's in the UK. So that would be a good um, podcast mm -hmm. to listen to. And also Fabulously Keto is also based half in the UK, half in Thailand, but um, Jackie's mm -hmm. in the UK. So there might be some things in there that they talk about that are kind of UK specific that might help you out as well. All I know is clotted cream apparently. <laughs> I don't even know, what, does I don't even know what that cream. really is. I've never had it. Um, sorry, Justin said. I mean, are we here yet? When people are having like alcohol again, I'm calling it. there's a zero carb beer, burly big head. Yes, we like that. That's what I would choose. You'll have to come and show I us. Will. You like the burly big head thing? Yeah. yeah. More than pure blonde. It's, yeah. it's Pure blonde has some carbs, big head has none. Um, and you I like, like the smoke. flavor more. I don't drink really at all, but I have tried both and I prefer the, um, and it's available like at a lot of, it's pretty readily available now, which is good. Okay. So here is the onion, jalapeno and capsicum red bell pepper mixture. We need to let that cool a bit. So I'm just going to set that aside. Next instructions said, Put it in a medium bowl. Once the onion mixture has cooled, add the chicken mince, the coriander, and the seasoning and mix. So I'll get the mince out, but that's going to take a little while to cool down. You could pop it in the freezer if you oh, want. Oh, yeah, you did say that. <laughs> the fridge or the freezer? The freezer. There's nothing in the freezer, so there's plenty of room. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Amalia, for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you can get that big head beer at Dan and Murphy's. You can get it at a you lot of places now. You can get it at most. Now. Most places will have it. Yeah. Roman said, something I haven't done for a while, if you're not on dairy-free, is chicken wings brushed with oil or butter and then sprinkled liberally with parmesan cheese and then bake. Ooh. Yeah, I think that I've seen people nice. do I've that I've never before. tried that. Um, oh, Susan. Oh, we've got Susan and David. Why are you eating your stroganoff? Delicious. Lucky David. <laughs> <laughs> Must be his lucky night. <laughs> Hope you are both doing well. Um, Jane has been watching your videos for about a year. Have lost 12 kilos. Wow. Well and done, I put Jane. it back on after a work accident. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your accident. Um, it's hard to find an Aussie version of recipes. There's, a, there's, a, there's lots out there. But you found the right Obviously ones. Obviously ours are the best, so, you know. And thank you so much, Justin and Sylvia. Appreciate it. You guys. Do you want more avocado than that? No, I think that's plenty. We're going to be eating avocado every day. Well, well three whole <laughs> avocados. It's nice for breakfast, though. You'll have some with I'll have some with my eggs. For sure. Just that we don't have any, like, of our normal, like, glad wrap or, like, Bowls containers. <laughs> to store stuff in but you know <laughs> so what have you got there dan we can't quite see okay so there. i've plated already yeah gone in early there is some rocket 
and the guacamole and i'm just mainly because i'm just waiting for this stuff to cool down and then we'll make the patties and it'll all come together pretty quickly so once we get that stuff cooled down we're going to add some chopped coriander just for you eleni some of the tex-mex seasoning from um clean and simple if you're not aware we're currently in our clean and simple reset kind of challenge it's 28 days we're at 24 so we're nearly we're at the 24. end it's the 24th today wow oh, so yeah, so we're nearly at the end but yeah. as part of the clean and simple reset you get a cookbook uh has a bunch of recipes in there but erica has created these um spice blends and this is the one we're using tonight Tex yeah but so if you wanted to make these and you didn't have that recipe you can just use any like kind of taco seasoning that yeah you find. it's, it's similar sure to it that work yeah tribbles also from new york wow we've got new york we've got, we've got some new york in the house tonight and London. <laughs> We're feeling very international here in Port Macquarie. That so we've got people in New York and London watching. Love that. Oh, I want to go back to New York and to London. I feel like we're never going to be allowed to go anywhere ever again. We love <laughs> for people who don't who are in New York and London and aren't familiar with what's happening in Australia with COVID. Like we, we're very lucky as far as everything's pretty much somewhat back to normal here and we don't have many cases but we also aren't allowed to go overseas at all and no one's really allowed to come and visit and the government has kind of indicated that's going to be the case possibly till this time next year yeah so that is where we're at How long have we taken the freezer? Well, he said double the coriander. So she doesn't like coriander. <laughs> no, she hates it. <laughs> yes, the mingle taco mix, that would be a good option too. Yes, thanks, Annette. Good idea. How's it going? It just needs to not be hot because you don't want to cook the mince. Just giving it a bit of a stir. Yeah. Either, not we're not home. in our own home we are not in our own home any other questions or things that you want to ask us tonight for some of the new people that maybe don't know us as well as some of the old the old crew that are here every week supporting us i'll, I'll answer anything <laughs> big call big call <laughs> Only because everyone here is nice. Luckily, we don't get the the trolls. Um, Susan said, do you find it tastes like soap, Belenny? That's quite a common um, comment, isn't it's like it? It's a that, genetic thing. Isn't yeah, it? you either love it or you just cannot stand the taste of it. Um, Actually, we can show these. Oh, yeah, they were nice. Yeah, they were. Just soak them up with sea salt. So we had some of these we took them to melbourne and we didn't eat them but we've eaten some today and they're just literally coconut and sea salt and we got them i think from low carbon pro no, no i herb. heard i heard so they're they're really nice and they're actually crunchy and they're thin but they're flaky super So they're kind of, they're quite very, very thin and they're like crunchy and they're yummy. <laughs> Eleni said it starts with S, but it's not so. <laughs> Sorry, so, that moment. So it's not that genetic thing then? <laughs> you just don't like it? Sylvia said she's in the anti coriander club as well. No. And for people in New, we're talking about cilantro when we say coriander. Sorry, if you're wondering what we're talking about, it seems to be some sort of genetic thing. Some people think it tastes like soap, and other people like me think it's the best thing, the best ever, thing ever, and put it on everything. Cool, 
Uh, okay, hoping to travel to Australia open so I can come to compete. I always have a fun fun playing in your country. Yes, so hope yeah. We'll see when when's your volleyball tournament scheduled for after <laughs> They're allowing athletes and stuff in for Are certain they? things. Yeah, the oh, surfers yeah. and all that, Kate. And the Australian Open, yeah. they allow the so tennis players in. They, so it's likely you'll be able to come for that. You might just have to quarantine. Is there like a teacher? All right, so I've got that mixture. It's as cool as I'm going to let it get. I'm getting impatient. So the next instructions are add the chicken mince, the coriander, and the seasoning. So we'll pop the coriander in. It was. If you don't like coriander or you think it tastes like soap, soap <laughs> you can just leave it out. So, so far, I haven't put the salt in to that mixture, so I didn't do a very good job there. Hmm. I'll add that in now. Um, we've used... A brown onion, a red capsicum, a jalapeno, and I'm going to put the 500 grams of chicken mince. I've done two tablespoons of coriander, and I'm going to do one tablespoon of this, which is that Tex-Mex that I was showing you before. I had to go and find tablespoons in Port Macquarie today because I forgot to bring one, and Dan likes to do things very precisely. Although I didn't put the salt in. <laughs> You know. <laughs> and oh, Marty's not a coriander fan either. Yes, love coriander. It's the best, isn't it? Hey, Joe. A bit late, but you haven't missed anything. Jo Des made guacamole. And oh, now she is I making the fajita patties. I made the – took forever to make that stuff, felt like. Oh, this wasn't a good one for me to do. <laughs> Susan said sometimes she uses Italian parsley instead of coriander or cilantro. You have to work it down. Erica did say, the mixture is sticky in the instructions. So, oh, great. <laughs> what am I doing? This one, oh, you probably in a small bowl. <laughs> oh, my God. Very dramatic. I'm not feeling confident about this. There's a lot of mixture to chicken mince ratio here. Well, just like make sure you. I'm smooshing. Pressure with my recipes with you making them. Well, I'm going to find all the faults, let me tell you. <laughs> Can you get me a. Should I just make them and put them straight in? Well, we'll just put them on that square plate there. So there's supposed to be eight. God. Doesn't really matter. Just don't make them too big, or they'll be hard to cook. Like that. Mhm. Mm Are you like dying <laughs> on the inside? Okay. I'm really not confident about this, but that's what I'm going with. What do you think? Does that look like a good patty so far? I think so. Looks very tasty. It's going to be delicious. I know that. Uh, are you in port? I just got here. Yes, we are in port, Jane Doe. Is that your real name? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it is. If so, I apologise because that would be really annoying. Because um, you'd have smart ass people yeah, like Erica exactly, saying that's all right. the time. Is we that are, name? We are in port. Joe loves coriander. And... She wanted to see, we'll watch the replay. She wears gloves. Yeah, so we don't. No. There was a comment about that on the. Um, yes, on our chicken snits or one. Someone's like, oh, what about hygiene? It's like, well, we're just cooking in our own home for our own benefit. So we don't, you know, we wash our hands and all is good. 
we're not cooking for other people or in a restaurant or commercial setting. <laughs> Do people like wear gloves when they make that? I mean, I think maybe Joe wear, wears gloves because of the chili or something. All oh, right. Uh, Linda said, I made these the other night. I got eight even sized balls using the I'm not going to get eight. I'm going to get seven. Oh, she used an ice cream scoop. That's a good idea. Looks delicious, full of flavor, Sylvia said. I would agree. Don't get too excited again. This last one's more capsicum mixture than chicken mince. <laughs> Let's come in and have a look. It's a bit hard to see what you're doing. That's all right. I want to get most of that. That's going to fall apart. But anyway. All right, there they are. I'm going to wash my hands, get the pan back on. Also, in the reset life, I'm just fishing around in our bag to see if there's anything we can talk about. We talked about these zero Mount Zero olives, marinated olives from Aldi, and we tried the ones that were rosemary. It's in a green packet. Was it rosemary? I didn't like them. I don't know what it was rosemary and something else, but it was almost too much rosemary. It tasted like medicinal. So I don't know if anyone else has tried them and thought the same. We haven't tried the lemon and thyme ones, so um, but they're very cute little pouches and they're in olive oil. Which the thing good. I didn't like about them were they were pretty small olives with like a pit in them. So there was a fair bit of work, but not a great deal of reward. <laughs> I know I sound like a princess, yes, but you really do. All right, so I'm just getting the pan up. It's All right, not a very Joe. good non-stick pan. So Joe said she wears gloves because she doesn't like the stickiness, not All for right. hygiene. It was just funny because we actually had our very first comment yeah. about that, and I think in Australia we're like a little bit more relaxed. Because I see, I watch um, barbecue YouTube videos and they all always wear gloves. I'm just, I mean, if you wash your hands, as long as you're not cooking in a commercial setting, I think it's fine, really. Oh, Marg's watching carefully because she's yet to make these. Oh, so gosh. she will use a bigger bowl, she says. <laughs> We're living, we're that was, a, the best that was the can. biggest ball we had, Mum. We're doing the best we can. Um, Aussie Matilda said, I have eczema bad on my hands currently and I have to use gloves all the time. It's a pain. Yeah, that would be a pain. Have we seen Luxa Cubes in IGA? No. Massim brand, low-carb, delicious. No, I haven't. So... Luxa cube, like you add hot water to it and it's like a soup or please explain what is a Luxa cube? If you're interested, we did film a video on soups that is going to start to um, be relevant with it getting a bit um, cooler and there was some options in Audi and Woolworths and Coles ready-made kind of, the Luxa one wasn't good in terms of ingredients because it had sugar mm -hmm. but um, there was pho and mm -hmm. chicken noodle and they use cognac noodles mm, for both of which those. Which very cool. Um, so if you haven't checked out that recipe, um, you that definitely video. should cook a video because there's a bunch of um, different options for soup, including making your own. Um, it's like a stock cube. Uh, Ro Sylvie said rosemary is another pet hate in pre-made things they always put so much rosemary in overpowering taste yeah that's what i think it must have been because it just tasted <laughs> what's going on Whoosh. Over there? It's you pouring. just pay attention it's pouring to it's not pouring is it i don't think it's raining it, it did pour down this afternoon when i was out 
going on a tablespoon hunt, but uh, is it raining? Most chefs cook with their hands. Yeah, exactly. That's what I think. It's almost like cleaner because you're more likely to wash your hands more regularly, I feel like, whereas with gloves you probably don't. I don't know. Do you know when you go to like a sandwich shop or something and they have gloves on and then like they yeah, they go into all the different things. And they're handling money and everything and it's like, well, it's probably better off if it was your hands. <laughs> Uh, Amalia doesn't like handling mint with her bare hands either. Yeah. That's what Dan's for. Erica doesn't do it. That's why it's my job. Hey, Matt. How are you going? Yes, we're in Port Macquarie again. Can you believe that was a month ago? Crazy. I just closed all my rings on my new Apple Watch. <laughs> I got a new watch a um, week and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. It looks like a stock cube. Interesting. We'll have to have a look for the Luxa, Luxa cubes. God, it's felt like a lot of waiting around tonight. Yes. Do we have soup recipes? Yes, we have lots of soup recipes. We have a Luxa, and it doesn't use any noodles at all. Um, does it? It doesn't use the cognac noodles. It's optional. You can, yeah. We just or like having the cabbage because it just acts like the noodle, and it's there's so much flavour anyway, and the noodles aren't offering any flavor so um we tend to just go with the cabbage we have a creamy cauliflower and smoky bacon is that what it's called mm -hmm. that's cauliflower. probably my favorite i really like that and the bacon there's some bacon in it but there's also some like croutons on top and they are delicious chicken chicken creamy chicken, chicken and soup. vegetable um, what and else have we got? A pumpkin, like a coconut and curry. Pumpkin one. Yeah, we've got a few. If Egg you just drop. if you just type in soups into the search bar of Have Butterable Trouble, a bunch of them will come up. We also have um, a, a page on the website that has a bunch of different soups, not only ours, um, that will come up when you search that <clears> as well. And I want to do a broccoli and cheese one. Because I think that would be yummy. So that's on my, I want to do that this winter for the website. Um, oh, at the lighthouse it's pouring. I don't know where the lighthouse is. Um, oh, Amalia tried the heart and soul soups. Yeah, they they were, we were surprised we were how surprised. tasty they were. We were Mark said, I think you're doing extremely well, Dan, with the resources you have in that kitchen. Good Thank job. Thank you. <laughs> They're in. They're sizzling away. I can we'll hear them, them sizzling. Up. I think it's mainly just because I'm hungry. All right. Well, Let's have a look. Standard. I'm always hungry because I'm, as we mention every week, we normally eat between five and six, and so this usually ends up being a lot later than what we're used to, but the sacrifices we make for you guys. <laughs> uh, yes, the cauliflower bacon soup is yummy. Also, Erica cooked, um, did you cook something in that pan? Well, you cooked my eggs this morning, and she's like, this is a very non-stick, so I'm like, oh, great, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Cooking in a non-stick non pan. It's non-stick enough. Um, Bronwyn said, I think so too, Marg. It's hard to cook in a different kitchen. It's hard to cook in my own kitchen. Um, oh, you've got to tell us about your idea for next week. Oh, yes. Um, Joe said, I'm up there end of July, Port Macquarie, for 10 days. Well, I think, Joe, we will be here. No, we won't. Oh, not end of July, end of We're June. We're actually going to be away. Um, yes, Annette said, what are we doing next week? So this is what I thought. A while ago we did a series called the Mystery Box Challenge where I would pick out five ingredients for Erica and she would cook whatever she came up with. And quite a few people have called out, Dan needs to do a mystery box, Dan needs to do a mystery box. And I've always said 
No, because I'm no good at coming up with ideas and putting a recipe together. So what I thought was I could use you guys to help me come up with the ideas of whatever Erica picks. And so next week we're going to give that a go. You guys have to be here to help me out because who knows what I will come up with. But I'll show you the ingredients when we first come on and then you guys can give me suggestions, tell me what I should be doing, kind of lead me and I'll be the hands. That's my idea. All right, okay. So I don't know what people think about so that. Do I just get to choose completely on my own what the ingredients are? Yes. Or? Yes. Oh, ooh, the power. What am I going to choose? What's something that's notoriously difficult to cook? <laughs> Abalone. You don't need to be a... I'm joking. <laughs> Maybe just basic kind of stuff. So that's the idea anyway. So what do you think? What do people, what do I think? No. I come up with the idea. <laughs> Are you willing to just go with what people tell you to do? Yeah, but I need to make a decision. Like if three or four people say X, Y, Z, I'll just make so call as I go start, along. Are you going to decide what the dish is going to be or it's going to be like choose your own adventure along choose the Choose your way. own adventure. So like. like oh, no, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what kind of <laughs> suggestions we come up with. Um, what does everyone think? Jane, oh, Jane said Lighthouse Beach. We haven't been up there yet. Um, I'll just use heaps of butter. Everything's nonstick then. <laughs> um, Jules said, I love the mystery box. Oh, Eleni, you're not invited. <laughs> Eleni, you got to come. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Chris said, challenge Dan to do a dessert, the mystery oh, box. Oh, maybe a dessert mystery box. Just... Well, we've got to eat dinner. What, are you just going to give me dessert? I'll give you almond flour, sweetener. <laughs> Better have a backup plan for dinner in the freezer, in the fridge. Um, what has everyone said? Dan is so confident now. It's wonderful see, to see her like this. Thanks, Jane. Um. Trish said, sounds good. Have been thinking about when you did the mystery box. A lot of people liked it, but it wasn't a popular, mm. like views-wise, it didn't get a lot of um, love. So we moved away from it. Um, the people who watched it loved it, but it wasn't getting a lot of um, interest. So um, we'll try it this way and see how we go. Let me turn the fan up a bit. Bossy. Um, cabbage rolls. I did the cabbage rolls. Cabbage rolls done. Tick it off. <laughs> um, Maybe I'll give you a cabbage in the middle. Abalone, someone said. That's what I said. Who oh. said that? JF. <laughs> Chicken curry. <laughs> Three <laughs> course meal. Oh my God, you people. <laughs> what are you Three doing? Three course meal. Yes, I'll give you everything in the pantry and you have to create a three course meal. I like it. And I'll just sit at the table with. A candle, you know, candles and a rose. Oh, that one's better. How funny. I'm not cooking a three-course meal, you guys. Bridget said that challenge could head south in a mighty hurry, but will be fun along the way. <laughs> um, I think it's a good idea. I mean, you can use your own, obviously, ideas as well. Yeah, we'll kind of just do it together. We can. How many ingredients? Like, Five. Is there a limit? Five. Five. Plus pantry. Things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And clean and simple will be finished, so there can be dairy and whatnot okay. in there as well. Ooh, okay. Start putting your suggestions of five ingredients then. Bear in in box, Erica. Inbox yeah. them to Erica. Just Please, it, inbox just, them to just Erica. Put in the comments here your ideas. Inbox them to Erica. Five ingredients. Erica um, Burt, Facebook, but, inbox. <laughs> but, um, what, like, you don't have to include, like, oils. Salt, Beef Wellington. Spices and stuff, but just the actual ingredients. So you'll have, like, pantry staples. So 
Just okay, needs to move along now. Things. Just needed to up the pan a bit. Yes. The instruction said medium. I probably should have said medium high. Matt said that he did your curry zucchinis and it was really good. They're not mine. The Erica's. I just cooked them <laughs> once. Um, Defence Wiz said three courses, how they do it on chopped. Well, we're not on chopped. This is like lower the bar <laughs> in the US, so I vote for that too. Yeah, thanks, everyone. What did they say? I thought people were my fans. <laughs> no, my fans, not like. Yeah, they want they to bring you down. They're like, it's tall poppy syndrome. They literally just come here to watch me fail. <laughs> Three courses is how Well, you could do an entree pretty easily. I think it would be the dessert that would bring you down. That that would be tough. I'm I'm not a chef, like I'm not a cook at all. I can follow a recipe. That's why I've always steered away from the mystery box. And now I've put myself out there and you guys have just <laughs> thrown me completely <laughs> under the bus. Um JF said pork, capsicum, onions, mushrooms, and cheese. Ooh, could be good. Thanks, Chris. Chris said we all love you, Dan. <laughs> um, we have faith in you. Um, Marty said we do our own family NKR every couple of years. It's exhausting cooking three meals. Justin oh, said so stuffed cool. mushrooms. I love that idea. I also, be... remember, this can't go on for like five hours. This needs to be like I need to eat. I want to be in your family and do an MKR. That's cool. Susan said, what if the suggestors include a bit of an idea of the recipe? E.g., does Justin have any beef wellington ideas? Basically, Susan just wants to eat beef wellington. So, Justin, can you let her know how to make it? <laughs> keto, keto five puff pastry. Matt said, but you're a barbecue master, Dan. I'm not. You can't be good at everything. I'm not even a barbecue master. <laughs> I haven't done anything for for ages. This weekend. I'm planning to yeah. do ribs this weekend because, um, again, clean and simple is finished, so I, if I want to make them sweet, I can. Um, Jane said, Mexican cabbage rolls. Kashmari chili, Ooh. onion, cannellini beans, sweet potato, tomato paste, crispy bacon on top. Wow. wow. Very that fancy. Sounds very fancy. Dial your expectations down a few notches, Jay. Bronwyn <laughs> said, What about the fathead dough for beef wellington? It'll probably work. Yeah, I don't know if it'd like kind of melt off. That's what I find with fathead dough. It doesn't like hold necessarily in a shape like that. But okay, we could try. I just want to. Make them look a bit. Thanks so much, Chris. Chris said, good on you, Dan, and she gave you a super sticker. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is happening now. We're nearly there. I won't make you watch me cook the last four. I'll get Erica to taste them in a second. And Justin, I was just, I don't think there is a keto puff pastry. I was just joking. Someone's had a good crack. Oh, I'm sure so. I mean, it's not going to be like puff pastry. That's the thing. Just let puff pastry go. <laughs> Oh, you got eight in the end. I didn't think you were going to get eight. Oh, I did. I thought I was getting seven. Count, count. No. No, no, no. All right, I think we're nearly there. Don't give me a raw chicken. They're, they're raw. Oh. <laughs> All <laughs> Mark said, I think Beef Wellington's coming in as the favourite. <laughs> okay, so I'll give, I'll give you a beef tenderloin, I'll give you mushrooms, and I'll give you fat and dough ingredients then. And everyone, you're going to have to help her make a Beef Wellington. <laughs> and I'm going to have to eat it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, what do we think? Ah, oh, yum. Looks good. Looks just like the photo, actually. You've done well. You need to taste it now, please. Mm. 
Yeah, I think, Susan, it is like a cooked mushroom mixture. I don't know if there's pate. I'm not too familiar with the beef wellington, but. Okay, I'm move sure on. Move on from the beef wellington, <laughs> Ah, JF said it looks restaurant quality, Dan. Thanks, JF. That was the rocket. All right. We're going to cook these. Erica, do you want to grab a fork? A fork. You got to taste the guacamole as well. Oh, the guacamole as well. Okay. Here we go. What have we got? I'll try the guacamole first. Oh, the guacamole, guacamole is nice. really good. Yeah, they were perfect mm. avocados. It's really limey. That's the best. Okay, the patty. Held together well. You were worried I kept, about the, it. I kept the one I was worried about. You were worried about it. <laughs> Cooked through. Haven't fed you raw chicken? No. Hmm. Right. They're so good. They're, um, they're nice and tender. Like Even though they hold, to me, they hold together, but they're not real bouncy in your mouth. And then you just get the nice flavours from the onion and the, that's really delicious. It probably would have been better if I put the salt in with yeah. the stuff when they cook. They are a bit bland, um, but delicious. Good job. Did you put the Mexican spice in? Yeah. Yes, the spoon is dirty. <laughs> All right. Delicious. Thank you, everyone, for coming and interacting with us. Look out next week. You're going to have to be here at 5.30, please, because otherwise, it, you know, Dan's going to be on her own until people start helping. So <laughs> please be on time next week <laughs> so that I end up with a nice dinner. Mel said, love your channel. <laughs> Thanks for all you do. Well done, Dan and Erica. Looking forward to Monday's live. Yeah, I'm now not. <laughs> I thought it was a great idea until all of you... <laughs> Came up with the beef wellington, hashtag beef wellington. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, we will be back in our own kitchen next week. Eric is picking five ingredients and we will see you then. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.